All right, all right. Welcome, welcome, one and all. Uh, uh, my name is Mac, and I am doing a Let's Play of AI War. Uh, you're going to have to forgive any newbiness, because I have just gotten this game a few days ago. Um, I played but maybe 10 hours into the demo before I bought it. That's just how badass this demo was. And so now I got the full game, and I am going to try a Let's Play of it, just because I've always wanted to try to do this. Uh, anyways, just because I've I'm sure you, you want to watch me play. Let me try to explain a little bit of the game. Um, you've got your main screen here. You always want to start off by hosting the new campaign. I mean, how else are you going to start this game? Um, AI War, in its it, at its simplest, is... Well, put simply, you're a bunch of humans in uh, a resistance movement, and you are trying to fight against uh, two AIs that have pretty much taken over the galaxy. Uh, since they've turned their sights elsewhere, they are not going to notice your resistance, and this is the perfect time to strike back. So, what you do... Uh, uh, so, with your very, very small fleet compared to theirs, you have to fight back against them and ultimately retake the galaxy before they realize you're uh, a significant threat. Uh, seems simple enough, but really it's much more deep than that. I was very impressed when I first started playing it, just at the depth of it. The reason I was able to put so much time into the demo is because you uh, you have access to almost all of the campaign features, um, but the and each you have three hours for each campaign in the trial, and for, that was impressive. There's just a, not a lot of demos that you can do so much. In my opinion, it borders up on giving too much. But, Anyway, um, it's a fairly cheap game. It's twenty dollars. You can buy it on Steam, Direct to Drive, or any other place like that. You can also uh, download it at there uh, at the site. It's I believe it's arsengames.com. That's a r c e n g a m e s dot com. It's twenty dollars, and there are also several expansions out that I don't currently own. Uh, if I ever get those. Um, I'll be sure to make a video of them. They're about ten dollars a piece, but I've played the demos of the expansions, and they're pretty impressive features. So anyway, let's jump. Let let me get back to explaining the game. Um, you select your home planet uh, from any of these uh, planets or systems here with the uh, ship icon, like this one I'm hovering on right now, the one with the little X7 that pops up sometimes. Uh, that's uh, one pot potential place to start your planet. Uh, and for each starting planet, you also get a bonus ship type, uh, and that sh uh, ship type depends on where you start. So right here, you'll get a, a space tank, and if you read the text, it says that it is very heavily armored with low speed and range, but a strong attack. It's excellent against heavily uh, defended targets in the same manner as bombers. So, I don't know if they're any good, honestly. I haven't put enough time into the game to really understand all the little nuances and stuff, but that's part of the fun of this kind of thing. I want to try to learn while I'm doing this, and I'm uh, hoping anyone who watches this will enjoy uh, learning learning the game with me. Uh, so, I like to start uh, with this map seed. I like to start on this planet w that gives me the Parasite. Uh, the Parasite is one of my favorite ships. It, what it does is it lets you reclaim ships that it damages past a certain threshold, which is very useful early on since the Parasites are mm, relatively cheap. Um, and it uh, it ultimate they ultimately pay for themselves very quickly, and early on that's very important just because your economy's not going to be up to snuff. Anyway, um, in this screen you can choose the number of planets that you want to uh, have to play with. I usually play with 50, but you can choose anywhere from 10 to 120. If you uh, once you hit about 80 and above, the games get more difficult, but and longer, but more strategic. Once you get below, once you get to 40 and below, they uh, they're much faster paced and more difficult, just because you don't have as many planets you can take. There are also multiple map styles. Uh, in the base game, you have simple, realistic, simple hubs, and realistic hubs. Uh, I like simple hubs, but uh, there are you can choose pretty much whatever you want. They generally recommend that uh, usually the experienced players will play with uh, realistic or realistic hubs. So, like, here's... Well, I thought it would change. <laughs> uh, 
as you can there uh, this is one of the things that this is what realistic looks like as an example there's an example of simple hubs and it looks like um, uh, simple and simple hubs look the uh, same with a uh, few sm slight changes in, with this seat and here's realistic hubs um, I I personally like simple hubs just because I like to have all the clusters and uh, stuff, multiple gateways to every world, you know? I feel that that offers a lot more in the way of strategery at the cost of being slightly more vulnerable early on. Anyway, you can set a map seed uh, as it says anywhere between 1 and 2 billion uh, rich, with each seed re uh, representing an individual scenario. It uses a random number generator to generate each scenario and you can influence this scenario with a number seed. I haven't personally messed around to, with it too much, but on the wiki page for AI Wars there have been several um, user submitted maps that weren't created by other people, but they like found the um, they found this map seed that uh, they really liked and they decided to share it with the others. And you can uh, share the different settings. So like if I shared the number planets map, map style and map seed someone else would be able to play with this exact map. Uh, uh, you can also enable and disable um, certain ships uh, like uh, you can enable and disable ships that cloak, ships that teleport, uh, core, core shield generators, all of that. Um, combat style uh, sets the general speed of combat. Uh, normal, normal is uh, the default speed. You can have epic for slower, uh, uh, slower paced combat, which is generally recommended for people uh, new to the game or people who come from turn-based strategy backgrounds. I like to play on Blitz just because I'm used to playing StarCraft. Um, you can also adjust the unit cap. Um, so like on normal, the, the default setting, each, uh, each ship, uh, as you, if you change the unit cap from normal to low, each ship does approximately twice as much damage, um, but is, all, uh, is twice as strong, but it also has twice as much damage and takes twice as long to produce. The opposite is uh, true for high, which each one is half as strong, half as expensive, and takes half as long to produce. It's mostly just personal preference. I like setting, playing it on low just because I don't have a super powerful computer. I have um, an Acer laptop that I'm using uh, with a Core i3, so I could play it on high, but uh, since I'm uh, using Wine on Ubuntu, I can explain that more in a later video, uh, but just take my word for it. It tends to slow down the game a little bit, so... Anyway, you can also adjust the fog of war. I can I'm going to explain that more as the as I start the game. You can also change various options as far as the AI. What I've selected here uh, adjusts the AI progress every um, every certain amount. You can set it to uh, in increment every blank minutes. Uh, I the last game I played was with 15, but I'm going to set it to 30 for this example. You can also um, uh, set modifiers for the AI. So schizophrenic uh, uh, s sends mixed wave of sh mixed waves of ships instead of just one individual type. This makes them harder to counter, uh, but they're much more interesting. You can also increase the number of enemy waves, have them, or remove them entirely. If you set nuclear command, if you blow up the, an AI command center, command command center, it will explode, destroying all ships on the planet. Uh, but the planet itself will survive. You can also disable wave warnings, which will make them much, which will make them much more difficult to defend against. Uh, generally, it's only really experienced players that play with that kind of setting. You can also have cross-planet uh, waves. Um, oh, this makes it so that waves spawn on an AI planet and travel across space instead of spawning at a wormhole. And this uh, this means that you generally won't know where uh, a wave will appear. And as with the same thing with the wave warnings, it uh, can make the game very difficult and is recommended for experienced players. 
You can also include minor factions in the game, which I, I personally enjoy the uh, minor factions just because they add that extra little bit of difficulty and spice to the game. After all, variety is the spice of life. Uh, human colony uh, rebellions, human marauders, and human resistance fighters. I have never encountered the resistance fighters or the colony rebellions, but I've encountered the marauders some five times or so. Uh, they're kind of difficult, uh, depending on how high the AI difficulty level is, or how late it is in the game. But, uh, I mean, early game they can be devastating, but late game they tend to be a bit of a pushover. Uh, you can also set various AI plots. Now you have more than the two options uh, if you buy the expansions, but uh, as I'm a penny pincher, I don't have any right now. You, uh, and you can set different AI plots for, for each of the two AIs. Uh, Avenger makes it so that if the home command station gets destroyed, which is your target, uh, then it will spawn a massive offensive space station that is going to travel towards the human home worlds to destroy them. I've seen YouTube videos of these. They are incredibly strong with, what was it? The one I saw had, I think, 1 billion health or something like that. I know that seems like a lot, and it really is, but the fact is that in the game, it's not uncommon to encounter a st an enemy structure or fortress with several million health. Uh, you can also have astro trains, which are very powerful and can be a real nuisance when you're set, when, especially early game, when you're setting up defenses. Uh, I tend to, I had, I played with astro trains once, and I didn't really care for it. Uh, they were just more annoying and weren't. Re really exciting or anything like that, so I tend to leave those disabled. I have not tried Avenger, uh, but I might sometime if I'm just experimenting on the lowest level of AI. Anyway, you can also change uh, um, the AI type. Uh, there's a huge, huge list here. I might go over that in a different video. It would be very interesting and so on, but uh, I personally want to get started with the game fairly soon. Um, I've set it to 5, uh, just because I do not have much experience with the game. I uh, just am practicing, still learning and all that. I'm going to set my colors so that you guys can actually see me, uh, and adjust the AI colors as well. Okay, so we're all set with that. Oh no, I want a darker green. Anyway, um, now that we're all set with that, I'm going to end this recording and see if it... Uh, recorded uh, all right and if that's the case i'm going to re-record this video and uh, then i'm going to uh, record the final version and upload it later oh, and i'm sorry for the tv in the uh, background since this is after all a test video uh, it's probably not, never going to see the light of day all right well um now that i've gone over that goodbye and good luck